and move to our next amazing speaker that we have. Um, our next speaker is going to be talking about house hacking. What is house hacking? I'm interested. I'm not really sure. So um, our, our presenter is amazing. He knows that relationships are the key to his success. He never misses an opportunity to dive a bit deeper with his clients and build the necessary trust that fortifies a relationship. He'd tell you it's not about how many realtors you know, it's about the last one that you remember. So be memorable. So that's good advice for everybody. Michael's first experience buying and owning his own home was an exhilarating experience that he enjoys um, recreating for the families he works with so that they can bask in the excitement. In his off time, Michael enjoys weekends with his son and whether that's shooting some hoops or throwing a baseball to each other, he doesn't miss an opportunity to build that bond. Um, what would Michael say about living in San Francisco? Uh, the people here are truly happy, healthy, and proud. It's easy to see why so many people from all over the world come to visit and also the reason why the cost of living is so high because no one leaves. I love that, Michael. Hi. I love it. You turned your camera around without me even asking. How's it going, Michael? This is Michael Nguyen. I got told yesterday to say his last name properly, so <laughs> appreciate that. We are going to jump right into what is house hacking, Michael. Um, did you want to give us any any quick information before I start with questions, or are you are you good and ready to dive in? Uh, no, I just want to say good morning to everyone. Um, I'm very humbled to be part of this panel and just appreciate the opportunity to speak. Love it. I love all the information you guys are bringing because this is such important um, information and really just timely for the for the market that we have going on right now. So. First question, mm -hmm. and my question primarily, what is house hacking? Well, house hacking is uh, today's new phrase, but it's actually a very old concept. Um, the idea isn't new, but the application is becoming more popular. Um, house hacking is just thinking creatively, and um, it is a strategy that involves renting out portions of your primary, primary residence uh, just to offset the um, your living expenses. Um, <clears throat> it is ideal for young investors and you know first-time home buyer, you know who wants to break into the real estate market and doesn't want to carry the burden of a financial um, mortgage payment. <clears throat> oh, you, Marissa, you on mute? And I clicked it. I just <laughs> didn't do it for me right away. So that was a, I was laughing. I was going, oh, uh oh, is that the 2020 saying? Right, you're on mute. <laughs> so I love that. Um, no, that's fantastic. That clears it right up for me. And I, I really appreciate knowing that because I was wondering, I've been hearing that, you know, and didn't yeah. thought that might be it, but wasn't sure. So, um, well, Michael, is it really possible to, though, to cover your whole mortgage and live rent free with this strategy? Well, yeah, it really depends. Um, but, you know, anything is possible um, for most people. Home mortgage is, is one of the biggest uh expenses of the budget. Um, so by lowering this, you can potentially free up more money for other things um, while simultaneously building wealth and um, paying down their mortgage. Um, it is a great way um, towards, uh, you know, building wealth and possibly even retiring early. Um, <clears throat> when done correctly, um, they can you know, live in a desirable neighborhood and with minimal expenses or even completely free. So it is possible. Well, I love that. I think that's great knowledge for everybody that's listening right now. So, uh, well, what if you find <clears throat> tenants to move in before you close on the property? Are you able to use that income to qualify for a, a higher mortgage? Um, yes, I, you know, I, I think this is a good question. Um, I, I think you meant by low, lower mortgage. Um, well, anyway, um, but this question would probably be good to, you know, um, talk to your lender or the loan officer about, but my advice is probably not to bring up, you know, things like that during the transaction, just to keep things moving slowly. I know lenders are pretty sensitive when, you know, all of a sudden things are just popping up out of nowhere. And <clears throat> just because you have a lease to rent, that is not the same as having a history of rental payment, you know? So I don't know if lender would take that into consideration, but I would just wait on that and just wait until you actually get the house and then, you know, okay, and work it up there and then possibly maybe refinance later. Okay. So that's a great, that's a great information to know. Maybe possibly we're in, uh, doing refinance. Yeah. Don't bring it up right away. If you are just trying to, you know, get the, get the, you know, get the house first and close the deal. Okay. 
I appreciate that. I think that's great. Uh, that's actually a great strategy. So, um, Michael, have you found that this works better in certain parts of the Bay Area? I think the strategy can be applied anywhere. Um, you know, as long as the number works out, obviously, um, it is a way great. How it is a great way, however, um, to break into the real estate market, especially in the Bay Area, where housing can be too expensive to afford and live comfortably. So, yeah, it's. Uh, you know, because everything's so expensive here, it's probably, you know, a good way to um, get into the market, um, especially in the Bay Area, Ashley. I love it. I, I, I think that that's fantastic information, especially like you say, because of the cost. So, uh, well, let, let's let's flip the script a little. Let's ask, let's find out what this looks like. So can you describe for us what the ideal property for house hacking would be? Like what the square footage or the number of bedrooms, et cetera, would be to really, you know, help. help. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so, you know, first of all, let's just start with location. We all heard this phrase before, and it is true. Um, you probably want to start in a desirable neighborhood that you want to live in and then find properties that will work for, you know, for your goal. Um, you know, a successful house hack is to find properties with as much space as possible. Um, these can be additional units in uh, multifamily properties such as uh, duplexes and triplexes. Um, you can live in one and rent out the other. Um, and the great things, and the great thing is about these properties, they're classified as um, single family residential, which can be purchased with a low down payment, even if it's three, two, three, up to four units. So anything with two or more units is a plus. Um, and then another option is to look for properties that have multiple bedrooms. You know, three or more is, you know, perfect. The extra bedroom again can be rented out, um, and even if you can't find one with, uh, you know, more bedroom, you can, you know, create one, um, you know, such as a large living room, dining room, a loft, um, you know, anything with uh, extra space, a den, um, just to uh, be converted into more bedroom. And some of these rooms, all you have to do just pretty much put up a partition wall, and then now, boom, you have an extra, you know extra space and I remember one of my friends he did this and oh my god sorry sorry I lost you there lost me oh your your internet did your internet go out or <laughs> okay anyway so yeah um, going back to to the partition uh, I my friend did one of these and he just put up a wall and the key is when you put up the wall use screws instead of nails so that way when you're ready to remove the wall it's just easy to just you know unscrew it instead of like trying to yank it out you know breaking down everything when it's all nailed in um so that's uh one of a uh, one of the other option and then the last one is to find properties with like you know uh, finished basement or additional dwelling units uh, they're called adus um, if you live or own in san francisco these are very common so again you know um the house hacking is not new. It's, you know, it's just been, do, you know, people, homeowners in San Francisco have been doing this for years. Um, they've just been doing it, you know, as a way to supplement, you know, their living expenses and just have extra income. Um, it's just, uh, they, they've just been doing it. They just, you know, never really knew that what they were doing was actually hacking already. <clears throat> Thank you for all that information. That was a really, really good answer for that question. We're going to move right over to uh, another question. Um, would you look for, then that would lead you to this question. Would you look for distressed properties and renovate them to maximize the number of bedrooms, which you kind of just answered in turn to give you more income? Sounds like your, an your answer kind of was leading us in, in that direction. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, sure. Um, you know, the dis, you know, what they're saying is the uglier the better, right? So, you know, you can find a distressed property. It's great because that means you can probably can get it for a good price, um, you know, which will even, you know, work more, um, you know, um, work better for you if you can, you know, find something that are really low in value and then, you know, put some money to fix it up and then maybe refinance at a higher, at a higher market rate. So yeah, distressed property is, is, is perfect, actually. 
Fantastic. <laughs> so everybody out there, look for something distressed. And you heard it from Michael, the uglier, the better. I don't know if that applies to everything, but it definitely applies to this. So <laughs> that's yeah. the piece of advice I'm guaranteeing that people are going to walk oh. away with. Oh, that sounds great. Oh, I apologize for my email. I did turn my notifications off, but I need to hear something. Um, okay. Uh, what, last question. What's the next step after you fully run out all the rooms in the property? Is it refinancing or is it finding another house to hack? Well, it all depends on, you know, each person's situation, but the answer would be yes and yes. <laughs> if you're breaking even or, in, you know, if you're breaking even or in the plus and living rent free, then just enjoy life, right? <laughs> um, but uh, and then uh, if you can find a lower interest rate um, and to refinance, um, then, you know, it's probably worth to do. Um, but in general, it's just, you know, pretty much if it's, if it's, process you know work for you then you know the saying is you know rinse and repeat right so you want to just you know if you can do it again sure why not you know eventually you will be building wealth for yourself so yeah definitely thank you so much michael well i don't think that i see any questions unless i'm going to direct everybody right now over into the chat if you have questions about what you heard michael talking about if there is uh, something that you've been dying to know about house hacking or something that you think that would be super helpful right now that you could get out of Michael because we're here to pick his brain and make sure that we actually get the answers that we need for this for the subject. Um, we're doing okay still on time. So we'll move, we're going to move over into the next topic here in a second, but I want to make sure that we get um, every, every question answered. So no questions in the chat. No love. No love for Michael. Okay, Dino gave you some love. He said, thanks, Michael. <laughs> so if somebody likes your presentation, this is good. I loved it. I thought it was very informative. Oh, Dave says, great job. Well, here we go. We got a Q&A question. Fantastic. Thank you guys so much. So any, tip, any tips for anyone that wants to start house hacking? So and tips that you might not have shared in this process. So um, I think for the most part, um, you know, I think you would want to again it's 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 about how to get in you know for this is more for you know not so much for um flippers or investors it's more for people that actually want to get into um the real estate market here especially in the bay area where pricing is so high so you know for the most part the tip is for first time home buyer or even young investor to want to get started that you know they they you know that you want to use your house as a primary residence you know you want to be actually living in there right. because if you're just buying it just to do this then that mean you know you are more of a flipper and you probably won't get the you know the the low interest rate or even the first down um payment uh, low if you didn't use it as a primary resident. Okay. All right. I think there's a follow-up question to that. Any obstacles that you faced that you overcame? And then <laughs> we never know who our secret question asker is. They're asking them anonymously. So I'm sorry. What was the question? It was any obstacles that you've overcome that uh, we'll, I'll go double check it. Any obstacles that you faced that you overcame in this process? Um. No, not I can't, I can't think of anything right now. But uh, again, in real estate, you know, th uh, there's always something that always, uh, you know, that's gonna come up. Um, the most important thing is, you know, to, you know, do your homework first, do your research first. Uh, you know, let's see if the number works for you. Obviously, you gotta have enough for, you know, down payment, and then you gotta have enough for, you know, um, you know, your your monthly mortgage. Um, credit score and all that stuff, but uh, yeah, uh, my best advice is probably you know do your homework first, do your research first, and you know find a good uh, realtor and good lender and you know and get started. Meeting myself so that those email notifications to make sure that everybody's taken care of don't come through while you're talking. I appreciate you. Oh, look, we've got one more question in the Q&A um, and we are going to wrap it up with that last question, guys. Thank you so much because we do have to move into our next panel after this. But this last question we can answer. It's how did you get funding and do you just go conventional? And that's from Dino. 
how did I get what? How did you get funding for this? And did you just go conventional? Funding or conventional was it? Yeah, it's how did you get funding? And did do you just go conventional? This is the question from Dino. Oh, yeah, I think it's mostly conventional. Okay. Does that answer your question, Dino? I was not sure I understand. Question. That's okay. Do you need if you need to ask a clarifying question to somebody when they ask, you're more than welcome to do so. I, I'm not the expert in that, so you I have to defer to you. Uh, Dino says yes, you answered his question. So fantastic. Thank you, Michael. Well, it's been wonderful chatting with you, Michael. I, I love that all of the things that you brought um, to, you know, right to the surface for us as far as knowledge and things that we can do to make sure that we're really utilizing our homes to the best of our ability for income and also making sure that we have a livable, a livable wage, right? So uh, awesome, Michael. So wonderful. Thank you so much.